Welcome, everyone, to the Sickos Committee podcast. This is our podcast for the evening of, oh, man, my brain just gave out already, guys. Going to be a good <laughs> one. March 31st, 2024. Happy Elite Eight to you. Happy Easter. Happy Trans Day of Visibility. Happy, what else is today? Did you see that next year, Easter's on 420? Ayo. I am so excited for people to lose their shit over that. It's going to be lit, yo. How many great, how many tattoos are going to happen next year of Jesus smoking a J coming out of the tomb? Like, how many people are going to get tattoos like that next year? I feel like a bunch. Y'all, I hope you enjoyed your days of basketball. I hope you, I enjoyed my day of chess. We're going to talk about some things later on. Our second half fun is going to be an Easter candy draft, because that's as creative as I could be today. But can I start with an Easter candy take that I got burned for on Twitter? Uh, black licorice jelly beans. Great. Discuss. Wrong. Jail. You know they sell an entire bag of black licorice jelly beans? Yeah, I know two people who like them. One of them is you. The other one is my dad. You're both wrong. Also my dad. Throw my dad in there, too. Okay, so th dads. Jail. Black jelly beans are for dads. Look. Beth, why don't black you like jelly black beans licorice? I feel like that's, that's one of the things you'd enjoy. You like you like star anise, don't you? Like the anise flavor? No? Big no. So our our absinthe night's not gonna happen? I mean, that's different. That's wormwood. Okay. See, different. Uzo? Are you okay with Uzo? No. How drunk am I? After no, <laughs> after after one night in Booth Bay Harbor with a a bunch of Navy folks in uh, Booth Bay Harbor, Maine. At a bar, uh, I can never drink Uzo again. I love all of those, like Rika, Uzo, take your Sambuca, all of those. Wait, licorice. no, Sambuca. Now I remember it was Sambuca. I, I don't, it, Sambuca was what we were drinking, and oh my God, I can't drink that ever again. It, Jordan it loves bad decisions. I More do. At six. I'm going to see my friend who has the Fernet in two weeks. Oh, God. It'll be fun. It's that time of year, folks. But black licorice things are tasty. I think I posited that, I mean, when y'all were kids, you definitely used to take Twizzlers at the movie theater. You cut them out or you bite the end off and you drink your drink with a Twizzler, right? That's common. Yes. Yeah. Black licorice. Dr. Pepper with black licorice, I bet would slap. Ew. What the fuck, Jordan? He's just came up with the 24th flavor. <laughs> yes. Just stirring it with your licorice. Black licorice stick? It'd be great. The American Association of Colleges regrets to inform the doctor that his PhD has been rescinded. Oh yeah, they're taking this away from me for this. This is this is my weird grift. I'm not gonna go anti-vaxxer. I'm not going, you know, weirdly pro horse tranquilizer, but everyone should take licorice every day. Oh no, thank you. I, I will just die. Thank you. This is the worst patent medicine. What about that that weird mix? It's like I think it's called all sorts or something like that. Oh, I know that. oh where it's like British the candy. little like the it's like kind of Britishy. It's like little like licorice sandwiches with like flavors. In oh them. no, I love those things. Yes. Yeah, you would. I assume you also like Good and Plenty. I love Good and Plenty. See, I can I can do the weird like sandwich thingies because okay. it's not like all black licorice like they they mix together the all sorts the good and plenty I can't do uh, I do like the change up of the random black jelly bean that you're not expecting uh, when you get the whole bag of jelly beans but apparently they they got rid of that so the the random just just you know ruined the whole thing you know like oh my god I ate a black jelly bean and I thought it was grape jelly bean has uh has been removed from the package just, is that what it is i mean no. i think that's fair because the like mix packs that have black jelly beans in them they all taste slightly like black jelly bean that's the problem with that flavor is that it contaminates everything mm -hmm. it, you can't really get away from it uh i love i love anise cookies i love drinks with an actually you know what all y'all got my whatchamacallit, my rock and rye, and that had one one bit of star anise in it. Yeah. It did. Yes. Can but confirm. It, I'm, I am fine with it 
sim similarly to my view on mayonnaise, I am fine with it as an ingredient in things, but I don't want it by itself. I also love the idea that this same plant or this same flavor is in so many cultures and no one really likes it. Everyone has the booze. Everyone has, I mean, like star anise comes is not the same as actual anise. Like those are two different things. They're not related. They just taste the same. So it's like the cancerization of flavors. Eventually it's all going to be licorice. <laughs> We're evolving towards licorice. I truly believe this. Licorice crab. Yes. Oh God. Licorice crab. That, that sounds like something that I would get out of a hot pot and be very concerned about when I opened it up. Like, oh, it's a, it's a crab and it's holding licorice. Okay, so let's talk about some on-the-scene reporting from me. Jordan, you forgot something. Oh, there are people here tonight. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Jordan. And with me tonight, as always, I have Pit Girl, Beth, Kamish, and then, of course, guest Arthur. Not guest Arthur, guest Andrew. <laughs> and Arthur on the ones and twos. Sure, why not? Andrew, how are you, sir? I'm good. I was instructed to uh, to mute because my keyboard is apparently very loud. So um, So loud. You know, it's I don't know why it's so loud. It's just a it is very loud. It's not a mechanical it, yeah. keyboard either. It's it's, it's just the back book. I don't know why it's so loud. But anyway, um a little dizzy. Been a lot of basketball watched in this household. Um some the playoff uh hockey is also happening in the Did Michigan NCAA win their game. Michigan yeah, Michigan win the game? won. They beat their uh, rival for the first time all season. So that was that was great. I enjoyed that immensely. And uh, and baseball season has begun, but the Mets are terrible, so we won't be talking about that. Oh, we, Eventually, we we'll probably start talking about it in a sickless capacity. But we could we could talk Mets. about the four and no Pittsburgh Pirates. You know, we That's should right. talk about that. The first time that they ever did that since 1903. Jesus Christ! Uh, <laughs> Champions of March. That's right. That's since right. since before since before two world wars. Yes. Since before air yes. like air flight. Yeah. <laughs> The Pittsburgh Pirates are four and zero, baby. Do they play tomorrow? Because I, I feel like closer to the start that... of the Civil War than the current day. <laughs> closer okay. to the start of the War of eighteen twelve than current Commission, day. They play the Nationals tomorrow, so oh, so so they could could they right. could move to five and zero by the time I, this. Podcast. I don't want to say anything like that because you know I, you know I'm just blessed. It's no, it's a new month, so they they won the World Series in March. That's all that matters. I don't usually do this, but producer note, you can raise the Jolly Roger because the Buckos are now 5-0. and They beat the Nats today, 8-4. to They beat Walgreens. They're on pace to go 162-0. and Okay, everybody get hype. Root, root, root for our home team. A new Pirates generation. Everybody shout, let's go Bucks! All right, I'm I'm commandeering the podcast for a moment. I just want to read off the teams that are defeated. Um, the Mets are 0 and 3. The Marlins are 0 and 4 because they lost all those games to the Pirates. The Astros got swept at home by the Yankees in a four game series, which is extremely funny. And the White Sox are going to be very bad this year. They're 0 and 3. They got swept by the Tigers. So you can introduce the next person now, Jordan. Big girl, how are you? Strawberry is risen. He is risen indeed. Thank you. Take this. Take this bit of frosting and eat of it, for it is my body. Beth, how are you? E okay. She's flat landing, folks. E Clear. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Clear. My house is full of children, and that's the sound they make. Only like nine octaves higher than that. Beth has a nibbling infestation. <laughs> We're going to have to tent it. You're never going to get out of the walls at this point. You know, you're just going to have to burn the whole place down. I'm sorry. I'm, hold on a second. I'm going to look up the chapter in Leviticus for this. Mm -hmm. Going to have to uh, do some sacrifices. Kamesh, how are you? Yo, this week has been nuts. Uh, just, I mean, I mean, you had Easter. You had, I mean, just a bunch of basketball. It's just, it's just been nonstop. I it's been so hectic for me. I rolled my ankle at some point and I don't know where I did it, but all I know is my ankle hurts. That's old man shit right there. 
it's just like I know at some point I stepped wrong doing something for the two kids, cooking brisket, doing other stuff. It definitely doesn't look like John Cornyn's brisket, but cooking things. <laughs> I was just about to uh, ask if your brisket was doesn't better. Doesn't have than John to post Cornyn's that. Brisket. He doesn't no, have to post that. We all knew the answer to that Christ, question, man. God. Look, look, Lincoln Riley's brisket was cooked. That John Cornyn shit was not cooked. <laughs> Tomato basted. It's an, it's an, oven, it's an oh. oven brisket. Oh, no. There's a difference between cooked and subjected to the Castle Bravo experiment. Mm-hmm. And what was that sauce on it? That looked like just ketchup. I, that, but like not good ketchup. Still checking in Leviticus. Would you say children are a defiling skin disease or a defiling mold? Mold. Mold. That's the that's the brisket. I would I would just say the the brisket, like the sauce that he put on it was like a can of V eight. Yep. <laughs> it looked like. Not even the spicy because it had been too much. Like, like it, it looks like <laughs> slow cooker brisket. He forgot which, to buy it. Not uh, even. He forgot like, to buy barbecue that, sauce. There was okay, a half but, drunk and yeah. V8 in the fridge. <laughs> it was like, oh, we're out of barbecue. Half, half drunk V8 in the fridge. Oh, the You're, you're going to reduce it down? There. Nah. Not even Pour the spicy on. V8, you know? <laughs> V4, because it's half a drunk. <laughs> it's half a drunk. <laughs> Christ, man. Come on. That's now, gross. Okay. You don't need to post that. Now I'm going to talk about my on campus reporting. Because I went to a campus. And I watched part of the President's Cup, which is the final four of chess in the collegiate world. I got to go watch UT Dallas, who hosted, and UT RGV, Rio Grande Valley, uh, Webster University out of St. Louis or close by, and Mizzou. And a couple of interesting things. It was at their business school, which I I, I sent a message to some of these folks, and I said, you know... I really should have thought about in college picking a major for the building that was the nicest because business schools always have that look about them. Lots of glass, lots of concrete. There's a little locally sourced coffee shop in the middle of it. There's a room that literally I would have called business room because it had like a business ticker along the wall. Like it's the fucking stock exchange in 2000, except it was Sunday or Saturday when I went. And so, yeah, I have to ask as a, as a fellow music student, was there something in the music building at your school just to like set the ambiance of what you and I are used to that you students contributed to the building? And if so, what was it? We contributed to the building because, I, music- because I have one and it's What's harrowing. Yours? What's yours? Mine was a large jug, like a Chianti jug. Yeah that was filled to the brim with expended Taco Bell sauce packets. Not the packets themselves, like the sauce from the packet. (laughs) This thing had been filled to the brim. Oh, okay. (laughs) And when you walked into the room, you slapped this jug. Yeah. Made a sound that that doesn't exist elsewhere in nature. That's (laughs) not what made it harrowing in the around the first anniversary of the jug finally being filled it simply exploded (laughs) oh fermentation yes oh yeah did anyone drink the taco bell juice i'm sure someone did i i i had just left like not moments before i did not see this happen (laughs) did you hear it I oh, many Jesus. videos were sent to me. I, later. I can imagine people heard it from miles around. Yes, but so whenever we talk about like going to the nice, this is the sort of it, would that have been out of place in any of the music schools you have been to, Jordan? No, that's completely. I mean, in the double read room, we had sacrifices. Oh yeah, there, there was a cobra statue that if you broke, if you chipped wood that you were working on, can you were working on, you gave it to the cobra because if you didn't, the next ten reads would go. Like you. Mm-hmm. There was superstition. We had piles of now bad idea because wood, wood reed shavings make great kindling. Mm. And we probably shouldn't have kept that much of it near a soldering iron plus other things, but whatever it happens. But yes, this college of business was not like that. You could tell the rooms people cared about them. Cause when I went upstairs, the rooms were locked. Like the actual classrooms Ooh. were locked. I have never what? seen that in a music building. <laughs> People's offices are open all the time. I can just walk into someone's office and grab something if I needed to. Yeah. A classroom wow. being locked blows my mind. 
I'm still hung up on the jug and specifically the ta the sound the jug makes. I'm imagining like a really deep like bloop. But when you smack it, it's got that like hollow with a bloop? Bloop, with a slurp and a bloop because things are moving too. There was also weirdly a ping. It was just oh. a whole experience. Anyways, this business school was nice at UT Dallas. There was the main room. Well, first off, I got there. I was like, I don't know where I'm going to go. I wonder if they'll have signs. Y'all, they had signs. They had tons of flags up that were chess final four. And I was so excited. Followed right in. And they had the main room where the players were playing. But they were going to make, they were going to take my phone if I went in there. And I was like, this is not reporting. I'll go to the commentary room. And they had these two poor women who were sitting there giving commentary to like the team's parents and some of the coaches were in there too. And so as they were sitting there going through all the games and explaining the moves, some of the other coaches in the room would be like, well, you suggested this, but would you not be concerned about capture it? Chief? Oh my God. That's the most harrowing kind of announcer job ever. You're getting asked difficult questions by the audience. So I went, I sat there for a bit and just got a vibe of the room, watched a little bit. I don't know nothing about chess. I did open the little pamphlet and found out that so many of these people are grandmasters. I thought that was a way more rare title, but like a ton of these, I say kids, they're all like in their you know, mid twenties, whatever. One of the dudes that won for Mizzou, he is like the 60th best chess player in the world. Oh, wow. Yeah. Once people were, people, people, he's a Wikipedia page for chess. Oh. And enough people were like, holy shit, Mizzou has that guy? Because he's apparently a, like one of the guys. SEC recruiting. Let me tell you. I assumed it was, I assumed it was a bag of, you know, but old days would have been McDonald's bag full of cash. But nowadays, you know, this is all above board in the chess world. Uh, Mizzou did win. Congrats to Mizzou. This is their first title in at least a while. Webster did not defend their title. UT RGV, UT Dallas did very well as well. This was a lot of fun. Great to go to. Great to just sort of walk into a room with a bunch of other people's families and they look at you like, what are you doing here? What are you did doing Did anybody here? ask you who you were and why you were there? No. First of all, first of all what shirt were you wearing? Uh, rice. Okay. Okay, that, that feels like the rice right chest. shirt. Yeah, yeah okay. I can, I can see rice chest. Yeah, yes. Or rice. Okay. And yeah, it was it was interesting to watch them do the like the real time call. I and I know nothing about chess, so them sitting there going through all the different. Have you guys played the password game online? Okay, it's I'll, I'll send it to you afterwards. It's a game where you have to set a password of a certain length, and it has to have certain things, and it keeps giving you extra rules mm. until it's almost impossible to make a password with all the rules. Because mm. one of them is like all the digits have to add up to. 25 in your password you have to keep adding digits but one of them is they give you a chessboard and your password must include the optimal move for that game oh no right and i don't know shit about chess so i have to type it in, i have to put it into a solver i don't know anything <laughs> and this is how i felt sitting there with them like moving pieces around a board digitally being like, well he can move here 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 and here i don't know what this is so that was how that was my experience it was a lot of fun UT Dallas is a beautiful campus uh, one of the things I always memory hold is they're moving to Division Two. They were D three for a long time. They're moving to D two. They don't have football. They have basketball and a bunch of other stuff. A great cricket team and Bollywood dance team. So Bollywood thank you, dance. UT Dallas, for hosting this. It was a great event. We still have some chess boards we are giving away, and we have chess boards we are selling. We'll talk about those during the time we pimp our things uh, time. Yeah, but yeah. I, I I just will say you know we 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 promoted it a good bit. And, um, you know, they're pretty cool. Yeah. I, I really, I really enjoy them. And hopefully we all get some sooner or later. There yeah. are two pictures now in the chat. That's all I will say. Oh. Let me see. Sounds promising. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, that's the jug exploding. Cool. Oh, God. Oh, no. Yeah. A, that, is that, that a jug or is that a carboy? It's... I, I don't know. What is a carboy? So, I, you know, if you've homebrewed beer like I've done in, in the past, a uh, carboy oh, is kind of like a big, a big, like, glass container. Um, 
it's kind of like one of those we were talking about time cop like uh one thing it's like a big water jug yep. like but yep. it's it's glass instead of plastic which it, it helps things ferment uh like beer uh, there's also like release valves and stuff that you put on or, the top yeah. of it. No release valves uh, on this, this thing, one, baby. This one did no not have a release valve. No release valves on this valve. one, baby. Uh, there, the pressure will build and build and build on. The, like I'm looking at the top of this, and it's just like a screw on cap, and I'm like, oh my god, it's gonna explode. And then there's the picture of it exploding. Yes. In in college band, it looks like cinnamon everywhere. I I, I sent out an APB for this thing uh, into like the into the chat that I was once in as a part of this music department and now everyone is looking for the video of when it exploded. Oh, oh. Wait, oh. wait, 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 wait. This was at IUP? Yes. <laughs> in college band, we had like our our annual, you know, give things to the underclassmen senior night thing. And one of the things that was passed around for at least four years was a jug of milk. Oh no. It was half full. It was taped up because it had like cracked open once and the room was unlivable. <laughs> I wonder how long that lasted. Because it was Too kept long. it was kept in dark closets. That was part of the rule. You had to keep it somewhere dark. <laughs> and the 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 jug was distended in weird ways. You had to you had to burp it. <laughs> it would explode. It's probably but, important to note here in this case that there is a Taco Bell directly across the street. <laughs> from I mean, the music it's, a, it's, it's a music school. You didn't have to say that. I just assumed that Taco Bells pop up across music departments from anywhere. It's in a locker too. Like some poor, did it explode in the locker? No, uh, the shot of the table is, is where it exploded. Oh, it was on a table. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I, wait, I is didn't... that, is that a power strip? It's, it's, oh, <laughs> It's bleeding into a power yeah. strip. Yes. Um, as far as I know, that's still in use. <laughs> the table, the power strip, the Baja yeah. Fresh. Yeah. Okay. The laptop cable, all of it. Jesus. Pennsylvania legislature, please fund the Pashi schools. They need new power strips. They're using Taco Bell covered ones. I made Pruno once, and I wonder if you can make it with hot sauce. With Taco I Bell mean, sauce. clearly this hot sauce prevented. Right, so. exactly. It has sugar in it. Okay, another bit of football. <laughs> yeah, Beth, I can see you thinking. Yeah, it's running through her head. No. It lies. <laughs> Did you see two things about Eastern Michigan today? The first bit was that... Eastern Michigan is ripping out their gray field and people panicked. No. They're putting in another gray field. Don't worry. Yay. Yeah. They're getting rid of their track. No. Uh, right. It does have that vibe. They're getting rid of the track. It's going to be all green except for the gray field, which is one of the things I love about that field. Because it yeah. is such a trip to see the green end zones or the green E in the center of the field that is obviously not of color. Uh, yep. the, other, the other thing is that uh, Coach Creighton at... Eastern Michigan sent a picture today for Easter that is just the Easter part of Eastern in block letters. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, no caption, notes. Are you, can I read the caption? Yeah. A hill three crosses in an empty tomb. It's not hard to see. He is risen. Because it's the the goalposts. There you the go. Word Easter and the hill where the E is. It's just an amazing tweet. And the walk-in for the players. Uh, it's so like, good. Looks like a That's, tomb. Uh-huh. There's your two. Except... And much like Jesus, Eastern Michigan's players come out smashing the rocks. If Jesus had come out with a sledgehammer, probably more impactful. Just I mean, say. it is literally quite impactful. I'm telling you. So Eastern, no one worry. Eastern's keeping their gray field. Don't panic. Everyone chill out. People were worried they were getting rid of it. It's fine. It's wonderful. They're not going to change that because it is their thing at this point. I saw a quote of, the field might be gray, but the colors are blue. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Boo. Yeah, I thought so too. Okay, so let's talk about some basketball. Right. Basketball. So, Andrew, first off, tell me, how did the CBI go? 
the important. Um, the it important. was it was a, it was actually I watched the the final four in the championship because you know I have I like basketball a lot. Um, yeah. But uh, it was it was fun. Um, High Point played extremely well throughout the whole year. They um, they were the one seed in the Big South and didn't make the tournament, and then um, played well in the CBI. But Seattle U came through in the end and and won. It was oddly at a neutral site in Daytona Beach, and there were. Like, I don't mean to be rude to the CBI, but there were only like a few hundred people in the stadium. So I think it should just be on campus sites um, because that would be more fun for all the fans. More travel, maybe more travel for the teams because everybody just kind of meets up at the Florida site. But um, I guess shout out Daytona. I don't don't know why it was there. Yeah, it was there last year too. Yeah, I think it was there last year too. I don't remember watching it last year. Yeah, I I remember the. It, it like they have like eight teams come, or is mm-hmm. it sixteen? I don't know. It was like eight, and they all just show up there for about like a week and just just do that. So I, I think it's easier on travel and and for everybody. Like the fans, I mean, it's probably just for like family. It's it, you know, especially yeah, Seattle University is in Daytona Beach, Florida, for the CBI. Yeah, it was like fifty of the friends and family of the players. So there were uh, 15 teams in this, um, and uh, Chicago State did win a game. So shout out to them. They hadn't played yes, in they like did. two months. Hell yeah. And they, and they beat UC San Diego, who was the two seed in this. But um, yeah, uh, High Point versus Seattle was the final, and that was, that was a pretty good game. Uh, High Point um, came back. They have a very good player. Um, I forget his, his name. I'm going to look up his name. So please hold well, on. It was, it was a back and forth game. It was ridiculous. Like, it was fun. And then all of a sudden, like, High Point takes a lead late. And then immediately, I think Seattle hits a, th- hits a three. And then they go on, like, a 15 nothing run to just end the game or something like that. I think it was okay. It was Here, insane. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the facts on the player I'm thinking of. He's a freshman from Cameroon. His name is Jocelyn Bodo Bodo. So he's seven, a seven-footer. Uh, he was the freshman of the year in the conference. So, yeah, I'm sure – Teams, unfortunately, the way that college basketball works now, he's probably going to up transfer, but hopefully he stays because High Point was very good this year and their coach seems pretty, pretty competent. So fingers crossed he sticks around. Kimish, you want to brag about the ULM Warhawks? Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the Lady Warhawks in the WNIT, they have, I have to taunt my sister a little bit here. I don't know if she listens to the podcast, but uh, they, they did beat Grambling and then they beat Southern Miss. Hell yeah, uh, they did. That's right. So the sibling rivalry, ULM, defeats Southern Miss. And I, I, I texted her about it to talk a little trash. And I, I want to I see, like, I just want to read what she said back to me. Um, so I was just like, I was like, you know, I sent her the link that, you know, ULM won. I sent her the tweet. And she was like, and she just responded back, women's basketball smack talking. Like, she was just like, I'm not having it. I was like, not even the NCAA tournament smack talking, the women's NIT. She sent me two rolling eye emojis, and I just uh, fi- finished the text with the words, Monroe, baby. There you go. That was it. <laughs> that was enough smack talking. It was perfect. They do play Troy on Yeah, they're 0-2 tomorrow. against Troy. That's tomorrow. I. Uh, it's going to be tough. Troy's graphic that they had for this game – they put ULM like so, so tiny at the bottom. It was, it was so ridiculous. Funny. It was so tiny. Was and so, so I had to funny. respond to it. I was like, ULM mentioned, you know, but like, <laughs> it, just, it was so tiny, so small, so small at the very bottom of the graphic. It was like, okay, hopefully. Of all of, all of our shit, we we're just aggressively ULM, pro ULM. But yeah, our one it. thing that we just never go from. It's pro ULM. It's method. so small. So bottom. it's ridiculous. You po- post and the silhouette of everybody. ULM is, is like so tiny. I don't. I, I, I think that's maybe though. like three font, three font size, four <laughs> font size, maybe. But like, it is so tiny, like you can barely see it. And I then like they the like watermark. They yes. watermarked it and like just almost completely faded the watermark like of ULM. <laughs> Zoko is incredible. I hope that backfires for Troy and ULM could actually beat. Uh, Troy for the first time uh, this this year. It'd be nice. I can hope, but you know it's going to be a tough one. Hey, okay, sounds good. Okay, Andrew, tell me more about other basketball. All right, sorry, these notes are a little cryptic. I uh, 
<laughs> I wrote them on a, I didn't have the show notes. Uh, so I wrote them on a piece of paper and transcribed them. That's fine. So uh, the Arizona um, Clemson game, Arizona did not play very well. Um, and Clemson played well. So they, they advanced. Um, and then NC State Marquette. These are the Sweet 16 games, by the way. NC State Marquette. I think Marquette went four of 31 from three. So Marquette uh, just. That throws. did not go well for her. This, I, this, yeah. look, this goes back to the thing of like basketball is horrifying because when five people can't make a shot, there's nothing you can do. Like mm. it, you hit cold and all of a sudden you just ice up. It's horrifying to watch in real time. Yeah, it's pretty. Hi, cool. Illinois. Marquette. Marquette was getting so many open shots and they just could not get anything to go in. It was yeah, twelve point nine percent from three in the game. Ouch! Jesus awful. Christ! Yeah, uh, what were they from three? Yeah, four of thirty-one. I did actually remember it. Yes, actually, that's, I remember the stat for a change. So, that's so bad. That's so bad. That's, yeah. Um, and then uh, the Duke, uh, the the Duke Houston game was a pretty uh, defensive affair. And then uh, Jamal Shedd, um, one of the best players in the country, twisted his ankle very badly, like, you know, rolled it. And yeah. uh, they they pretended like he was going to come back in. And, you know, he clearly, clearly could not. So that was a shame for he was Houston. On, he was on a, a, a scooter. Like, there was like no way. Like a scooter thingy. There was no yeah, way. Yeah, and then they, like, had him on the bench. Like, he was going to come back in. And it was very obvious he could barely walk. So that was weird. Um, and then uh, UConn continues to just steamroll everybody that they play. They're uh, they, real good. They're real they, good. They went on a thirty to nothing run. That was <laughs> against Illinois. I was watching this. Like, okay. Oh, Illinois didn't score for because the, the halftime was in the middle. Illinois didn't score for like forty one real minutes. Of oh my god! Life. And uh, they never they never took a timeout. So good good coaching. Horrifying thought. What if we had UConn play Virginia? Oh. Would Virginia score ever? You're describing oh, the La Brea Tar Pits. Uh, yeah. Not, like honestly. Virginia, because Virginia just wants to drag you down into it. And I I appreciate that. Don't get me wrong. I love a team that will pull you down to their level. But that's horrifying. And then uh, what's next here? Uh, in the Alabama Clemson game, uh, Mark, Marcus Sears had a pretty rough first half, but then hit like seven threes in the second half. So Alabama won and made their first ever Final Four. So shout out to them. Um, apparently, they've become a basketball school now that Nick Saban retired. So um, <laughs> shout out to them. Uh, Nate Oates went from being a like middle school basketball coach and math teacher and 11 years later is now in the Final Four. So shout out to him. Um, Zach Eady continues to be very good. We won't be discussing anything about how his game is officiated because that's a bit of a quagmire to discuss at all. Please don't, please he had don't 40, do that. He, yeah, we're not going to talk about that. Um, he had 40 points and 16 boards today. And folks, big man do it. the smacky smack. Mm -hmm. Folks, and NC State has done the improbable. They uh, they won five games in five days in the ACC tournament, and now they're in the final four. So. Emphatically so. Yeah, mm -hmm. like not yeah. even. DJ Burns was awesome before, and now he's forever a legend. March Madness legend, legend complete status. Um, the closest game that they played was against Oakland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Oakland, and Oakland looks super banger. fighty. Hey, yeah. what did, Beth, what did you, or Picker, what did you find about him? What is he playing? Oh, yes. He is, he plays multiple instruments. Um, hang on, I have to look that back up because I was not. He also has a rap and a rap track. And unlike most basketball rap tracks, it's actually pretty good. Let me does he go like DJ, DJ Burns? Because that would make me very happy. He, he should, but I don't think he does. Personal. And this is, in, this is what the contents of the personal life section on his Wikipedia page says. Mm -hmm. oh. Quote, Burns' father, Dwight Sr., is the agent in charge of York County for South Carolina Probation, Parole, and Pardon Services. His mother, Taleka, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, is an assistant principal at Dutchman Creek Middle School. Burns has a younger sister, Nadia. He is a multi-instrumentalist, playing the stand-up bass, tuba, piano, and saxophone. There you go. Also the kazoo, per the tweet that nice. brought this screenshot to me. It's a little-known fact that every multi-instrumentalist is extremely good at basketball. Yeah. I we know. don't say I mean, that you know. a lot, but no, it's, I, it's true. You, you know, there doesn't appear to be a photo on the internet of uh, DJ Burns playing the tuba. So yeah. I've, I've seen Beth dunk. So, mm -hmm. you know, definitely. In 
She's got in the replies. There is also a Bleacher Report article indicating that he owns two vending machines. Apparently, now it's like a vending machine empire. They're talking about it on the broadcast. The original Renaissance man. I don't know how that works. How do you own vending machines? So, so that game as well. This is according to. (laughs) Do you think that they just appear out of the wild, Andrew? I don't know. You have to feed them a little bit. Aren't they they usually owned by like? The Coca-Cola Corporation or like Pepsi, the ones that were like come and refill them. So the probably the vending machines are probably the ones with snacks in them. I would say that's right. those are those because those are not necessarily, and then you just pay like you know to restock them. And or you just, just do it yourself. I mean, you're, or do it yourself because you're probably on a college campus and somebody's always looking for a snack. And there's yeah, you put it in the right spot. You just got to make sure it's safe. Um, to to be there and you're good to go. I, I do want to say about this game. According to at Swordfish CFH, this is the first time a 11 seed has ever beat a four seed. Also, I think this is the first time a four seed 11 seed have ever played. Yeah, that's what they said on the broadcast at the beginning. So a pick that's a new one. I have hastily done some research and I am pleased to inform you that we can buy a used vending machine for the low, low price of $1,100. That's not that much. And not that bad. I'm pleased to inform you that I'm at least three paragraphs into an article about how to start a vending machine empire. <laughs> oh, actually, we can get a, a used Pepsi machine for $250. Oh, wow. That's, that's, the, that's my backyard. I can put that in my backyard. Shit. Seems like a business expense, guys. I was looking at this chart of what seats had played each other. And I want you to guess how far we have to get before these two seat, like, like, like a one seat playing a one seat, two seat playing a two seat, whatever. How far do we have to get before that game has never happened? Where a seat has played itself, which had to, have, which would have had to have been in the final four. Huh? Like six or seven. I'm going to guess six. No, we're six and six. I'm going to bet like it's a, a five three playing a three. Five. Okay. Oh, you got one? It's a five versus five, or maybe a four mm. versus four, but I, I don't. Yeah, fives don't make was, the final I'm, fours too often. I was feeling four versus four. It is six versus six. Okay. The five v five v five was Butler and Michigan State in twenty ten. Mm. Ah. Oh, dang it! Four, I was four, at four, that one. I should know that. <laughs> uh, four four. What four four was at least uh, Michigan and Syracuse in twenty thirteen. Okay. So there you go. Uh, none of the other ones, minus the ones that minus playing games. I don't like that this includes playing games because a play in fourteen versus a play in fourteen does not count the same as a honest to god fourteen playing a fourteen. Anyways, this person is doing sidagami, which is an awful set of mouth sounds. Well, oh no, I don't like that. No, I see, do I don't like that at all. You want some sidagami? Ugh. It sounds awful. That that sounds like something I don't want to Google. So the, the final four games are set for Saturday, um, the 6th, if you're listening to this in the future, 6th of April. Uh, NC State Purdue is at uh, 6 Eastern, 5 Pacific, or 5 Pacific, 5 Central. That's not how time zones work. Um, and uh, Alabama UConn is at uh, 7.50 Central. So uh, we get DJ Burns versus Zach Eady. That's, that's, that's all I care about. Big men slapping meat. I love it. So the, there was a tweet that... that that came across after NC State beat Duke. And it's from uh, uh, Carrie Miller at Karen's James. And it says, just realized there's still a chance for Purdue to lose to a double digit seed for a fourth consecutive year after that, all. That is yes. fucking yes. brutal. Yes. That is emotional Absolutely. terrorism. Absolutely brutal. It's emotional terrorism. Hey, uh, Pick Girl, do you want to argue for the ACC right now? I do, I do. Go for it. Um, I mean, like, fuck the whole conference pride thing. That annoys the shit out of me. We're not the SEC. We're not the SEC. However, I'm sure I would like to take fans are super happy for Alabama and Auburn fans as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Auburn fans are really having fun. However, I would like to take this moment to remind everybody that the last team NC State lost to is Pitt. Pitt actually swept NC State and yet was not worthy of getting a chance to go dancing. And they made us watch Virginia basketball. They made us watch Virginia basketball and made us watch like six Mountain West teams get bounced in the early rounds. 
No, we're not. There's sure. No Mountain West slander here. I Wait, will not have no. this. I will not no. have this. Look, they were fun. I New don't Mexico know that it was steal, a six-bid league. New Mexico did steal probably like Pitt or Seton Hall's bid. Honestly. Oh, for sure. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? The uh, Which fan base do you think has the most like fans that currently live in Arizona? Of UConn, Alabama, NC State, and Purdue. I'm going to guess Purdue. Uh, it's uh, Purdue. UConn. I'm going to guess UConn. It's Purdue. Every every old Midwesterner moves to Arizona. You're telling me that the insurance who state Florida. does not have that many people living like just outside of Phoenix and Scottsdale. The entire population of Connecticut goes to Arizona. That's just where that's they what, go. See, that's what that's what I thought too. Like, like Connecticut well, also. also has that. Has Connecticut's that large... chief export is Arizona residents. I mean, yeah, you know. that's where I'm stuck because there are a lot of Midwesterners in the Scottsdale Phoenix region, but I don't know if they're Indiana people from Indiana Hoosiers. That's why. It, no, I'm it's it's, it's definitely the Yukon fans because they've never left after Yukon went to that Fiesta Bowl. <laughs> and really, would you? No, I, I wouldn't. They, got, they had nice weather. I gotta go back. Like, I'm I gotta go back to the net next. No, screw this. I'm I'm, I'm living here. I, even though Oklahoma. Took it to us pretty good here. Uh, Honey, put the house of Danbury on the market. We're staying. We're staying. Grandpa died the way he lived, saying it's a dry heat. (laughs) (laughs) From Norwich, Connecticut to Phoenix, Arizona. All the Connecticut senior citizens I know spend the winter in Florida. So I think I think they're getting priced out of Florida. Mm. Yeah, they've problem. been in Florida for a while. Well, especially yeah. if they're Connecticut insurance people, they 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 know not to go to Florida. That's true. That's, That's right. True. So to go to Arizona, probably a little bit better. It, it may be a little bit of a dry heat, but you know. Okay, Andrew. What about the NIT then? All right, your final four is our Indiana State Sycamores. Hell yeah! Yeah, woo. Uh, they they Cincinnati um, at home. All those. The pre-final four games are on the higher seeds home court, um, which I was saying for the CBI, I think would be a good idea to have. Um, for this, it's great um, because teams like Ohio State and Georgia play each other, um, and you know that's pretty funny. And uh, Georgia beat Ohio State here uh, in Columbus, Ohio, where I'm podcasting from. And um, Utah was uh, able to beat off uh, VCU and Seton Hall kind of truck stomped a uh, poor old UNLV. But Seton Hall usually plays their big games um, at the Prudential Center, which is where the Devils play in Newark. But they're on campus stadium, as you can see by the photo that I'll also put in the um, the chat. For it's adorable. Users is really cute and small. But the camera angle, as you can see, it's like from above and points yeah. down. So if you're um, listening at home, um, I encourage you to either join our Discord to see this photo that I'm hastily trying to copy paste and it's not working, so I'll try in a moment. But um, just Google, I think it's called Welsh Gymnasium. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, 300. It's, yeah, I it's, couldn't it's, take it's very my small. Eye this game, like when it was probably you tweeting, like, "Oh my god, I forgot this camera angle." I was like, "I am putting this on. I am watching the entire game." That it was not me. close. It reminds me of Duquesne's on-campus basketball facility a lot. I love the small there's, arenas. There's like no. Um, Behind the uh, board backboards, like behind the, the yeah. um, sides, there's no seating. It's above, like it's like elevated. I love it. Um, and there's seating on one side and then above too. It's it's very confusing. So just Google it. I'm not doing a very good job of explaining. It has, it has your final four is in uh, Hinkle Fieldhouse, which has the amazing windows um, in Indy. Oh, yeah. So oh yeah, all right, uh, another uh, Big East venue. So shout out to that. More places need to use the palestra. I'm just saying. Agreed. Agreed. Hopefully this tournament will be in the palestra soon. Before we go on to the women's side of things, let's do our ad break. As always. First off, and uh, Arthur, thank you last week for doing the ad break because I forgot to do it. You did an excellent job, sir. Thank you, Arthur. That was very nice of you. Uh, As always, we have different folks that we that we have sponsors that you get a discount code if you use from. We have Seven Coffee Roasters, Bearded Brothers Organics, Cola Goodies, which are chai, teas, and milk lattes, and then pour more, our liquor subscription service. Use offer code yes, ha, 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 yes, three ha's. 5% off your first order. You cannot ship to Utah, Mississippi, Alabama, Massachusetts, Tennessee, Hawaii, Michigan, or South Dakota. 
We also have this week our chess boards. Check out our Twitter timeline. We have some chess board giveaways and some custom Sickos chess boards with discounts as well. So pick yourself up a new chess board or two or ten. Give them out as gifts. I wonder, maybe that's what we do, guys. We need to figure out something we can start selling as corporate gifts. Like, oh, you got these Sickos whiskey this year. It's $200 oh. a bottle. Oh, okay. Oh. Shout out to our chessboard sponsors, but I think it needs to be a little smaller than a chessboard. The trip. Sicko's X etched rocks glass. Yeah. So these oh, chessboards, yes. I, I mean, they may be confusing for people online. They're like the vinyl roll up chessboards. Yeah. So like you like oh. roll up. It's like the oh. mat that you roll like the travel, up. I, the travel chess. Yeah. Perfect. So like you roll them, and like they were used. People for think the like board. Like, no, it's just like yeah. no. They, you roll it. It, roll it out, drop your pieces on it, whatever. I don't think they come with pieces. <laughs> just but, like, works. You drop your pieces on it, however they land up. No. Whatever, line them up, whatever. <laughs> no, no, no. They, we're using the chess pieces like oracle bones. It's totally. fine. Listen, <laughs> they see Kamish rolling. They hate him. Yeah, they hate him. <laughs> Yahtzee. Right. Yahtzee. Try to catch him riding nerdy. Riding nerdy. <laughs> Uh, so you check out our timeline for that. It's all on there. All the discounts are on the codes are on there as well. I don't even know how long it's going to last. So hurry yeah, up and well, get it. So yeah. maybe by the time this podcast, who knows? I don't it's know. There, no, 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 disclosed date in the future. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Like we none like shall these, know the hour. These folks <laughs> approached us. us. These folks approached us. Uh, approached us to like you know, and they were like, "Hey, we'll do this, and you'll you'll sell a bunch." And I'm like, "Okay, I we'll give it a shot." Make it work. Uh, so just just we're we're trying. Get some. It's awesome. It's a great gift. I, I bought one for my sister uh, because her, her six-year-old is, is getting into chess already. I'm like, that's kind of weird, but uh, go right ahead. And, um, you know, he picked the basketball one, like the court nice. or the actual, no, the basketball one, the one that looks oh, like yeah, the yeah. texture of the basketball. Yeah. Yes. Smart kid. Yeah. So uh, yeah. It, ball it's know. a good ball one. knower. That's right. He knows ball. And uh, we, also, we also have our Patreon for five dollars a month, you can join our Discord and get access to just talking to us during the week and yelling about games. Right now, if you subscribe to the Patreon, you get access to our paywalled Substack posts as well, and also our Patreon podcasts, which include right now Prairie View Chronicles, where Commission Blue talk about the history of Prairie View A and M University football, including the 1990s and their 80 game losing streak and the drama around it. Beth and I have Yes, Ra 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 Yes, which is our band podcast where we talk about whatever. And sometimes I drop our theme song in the middle of the episode because I don't fucking know how to use Adobe Audition yet. It's fine. It's These fine. These are great. Think Close enough. Great. I hope and- Prayer View, uh, the episode, the Prayer View a and one coming out. And it's on Friday, right? It's on Friday. Yeah, okay. So hopefully the uh, Prayer View theme song gets dropped in the middle too. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. And then we have Commission's Corner where Commission talks about whatever random thing he decides to talk about on was, what day was it that you ran to your computer and had two podcasts? Uh, look, I have like week? that was last Tuesday. Last that, Tuesday, yeah. That was last Tuesday. It was something involving Creighton. Um, it was very strange. I think we have like four Commission's Corners just like randomly locked in. Yeah, they're in banked. A, they're banked. They're, they're banked. And so they'll, they'll come out randomly and. Uh, on the patron, uh, or if you're on the Substack too, you'll get those too if you're a paid Substack member. Our merch store, sickoscommittee.org. Order until the last day of the tournament, and then we're going to shut it down for a bit while I get new things out there and shift some things should around. I, should I do something crazy here? Like maybe increase the sale percentage by 4% because we've reached the final four? Do it. From Whoa. 16 to 16. You, you to are our mattress Mac. You're like, oh, I've oh. Got these nails everywhere. I don't know what's going on. I'm March crazy. madness. We've reached the final four. Let's increase the percentage by four. I just drank 20 ounces you of know, mercury. I was, it's March I was madness. Going to, I was <laughs> going to increase it by like the, the highest seed remaining in the final four, but I was like, NC State made it. 11. No, that's too much. And so I was like, we're not that's too much. Money. We're, we're not too money. crazy. It, it, we could do 27%. We'll do 20. We have our YouTube <laughs> channel. It's great because we have our new shorts on there. They're a lot of fun. Thank you for all the good comments on that. Our Instagram, our Substack. We have our friends over at Message Board Geniuses Podcast. They go to the places that we refuse to go because message boards are places where people just show their whole ass all the time. And lastly, Homeful Apparel, our oldest sponsor. Use offer code yes, ha ha ha, yes. 15% off your first order of the softest, most comfortable collegiate officially licensed apparel. We still have our Sicko's Shirt Showdown shirts going up. 
Let's see what we have left. Uh, oh, some of them are gone, but we still have. Oh, we have our final four for the NIT. We have Script Indiana State, the yes. Utah Running Utes Crew Neck, Seton Hall Duncan Pirate, and the Good Boy Georgia shirt. We also still have Vermont shirt up. We have the NC State shirt, which come on, folks, this is the best NC State shirt they have. I mean, that's like that's like two. Like, as as soon as the sizes go out, the sales over. They have two, like two in the final four, women's and men's. It's crazy. Oh, and it's also down only to small, medium, large, and extra large. So if you are. Okay. Yeah. You only got four sizes. If you are many. super chunky or super not chunky, we're out. So yeah. Only average size humans are allowed to buy these shirts. Only average, average size humans <laughs> remain. Average size. Allowed. For, all those, for all those shirts, those shirts are 25% off if you use our offer code committee. And that's good even if you've already ordered from them before. So do that. Show support, show support for your team, or just buy an Indiana State shirt because their colors are great. Man, those Houston Oilers colors always look good. Beautiful. Okay, so now on to let's talk about. Can I give a, a breaking news update that I've just discovered yes. and then we move beep, on beep, to the beep, final beep, part? Beep, 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 um, beep. So my uh, one of my university's baseball teams is having a very bad time. Uh, they talk, went talk to about Mich- talk about Michigan baseball, please. No, no, God, we're not going to talk about that. That's that that's its own podcast to talk about the the, the precipitous fall off when their coach left for Clemson. Uh, th- I'm talking about UCLA, who's okay. also bad now. Um, they're 10 and 15, and this weekend they played at Arizona um, for the last time as a conference foes, which is you know shitty. We all acknowledge that mm-hmm. Pac-12 falling apart is uh, a crime uh, against the sport, but they uh, lost three consecutive games. Two of them by one run, and all three of them were by a walk-off. One was in the t- bottom of the tenth, one was in the bottom of the ninth, and one was in the bottom of the twelfth. So, so one one of those that they lost by walk-off, the last two innings of the Pac-12 Network didn't have any commentators. Great, none, nothing. It was cool. just straight audio. So we don't necessarily know. I hadn't followed it, but I found it on like Sickos of Summer, and I had to tweet that. Uh, yeah, it, it was just basically the extra innings, like, like the announcers had a flight to catch. They didn't say anything, but for the 10th, 11th, and 12th Browned they Mac Browned, innings, Browned, it. They they Mac Mac Browned it. It's seeming like, I don't know if that's what happened. <laughs> they were just like, I'm out. I am done with this. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know if there was technical difficulties, but they never sent a message. I haven't followed up to figure out what it is. And I'm not going to do it right now because it's not as funny if I figure it out. But honestly, do you think the Pac-12 Network has any like operations people at this left? point? Yeah, no. I don't know. They're just There's like, no one hey, on the we only, phone. There's no we one only there. rented the equipment for nine innings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Pac-12 Network is one guy. Aaron's rent to own came in there. I was like, ah, oh, no. <laughs> it's just George <laughs> Kelly. I've got running around and bringing <laughs> on a switchboard. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I'm hoping it was just tech issues, but I, I've never. You know, after I saw that happen, I never figured out like what happened after, you know, to get the story because I just, I just, I just laughed about it. You just see the Arizona guy like celebrating. There's no any, like, there's a walk off. They're running. There's no sound. It's just, it's just like the crowd. It's they're going nuts, and it's just, it's just the cameraman following. Like, but well, the scoreboard was, was getting updated. Like, you know, they, like balls and there. strikes and everything it was getting updated, but there was nobody saying anything. It was insane. Oh, yeah. They have a stu- they have a student doing the the um, <laughs> score bug. Probably There's unpaid labor. Probably. There. probably. <laughs> Very minimally paid labor. Almost certainly. Maybe he gets some meal money. <laughs> Let's talk about the awesome things that are happening for the women's final four before we talk about the line. The not so awesome. The line. Yes. So okay. The stuff first. So, um, the final f- the, f- the final four is only half set because they play some games on Monday. The games, to, um, unfortunately, they will be after you uh, we release this podcast. So I'm previewing things that are going to happen after you listen to this. But the games tomorrow are uh, LSU Iowa, which will be an uh, absolute great basketball game and an absolute shit show on. I want uh, no media. one near. I want nowhere near. Do not any- log on. <laughs> Do not log on to Twitter tomorrow. Don't. Not just don't do it. It is, it is. Shout out to our friends at Message Board Geniuses. Who oh, my God. Only people oh, boy. On Twitter tomorrow. This is... And um, the other game is also really good. It's uh, UConn versus USC. So that'll be fun as well. Hell, yeah. 
Yeah, so that, don't, I'm not recommended to uh, the, go on. I, so honestly, avoid avoid social media on April Fool's Day is not a bad not a bad idea. So you're telling me that there's a chance that we could have two matching teams in the final four? Yes, and they can play in the final because they're on opposite sides. Ooh. Ooh. Hey. And we're guaranteed a, a good boy winning because it's either a wolf or a, a, a husky. They don't actually have a wolf. Do, do they have like a wolf dog at, at NC State? I think. They I don't think to. so. Oh, mascot, but you know the, so. the male and female the, mascot. The, the, but, yeah. the, the they have they have Tuffy, don't they? Yeah, I thought they had a like a wolf dog. Yeah, no, they got Tuffy. Oh. I forgot about Tuffy. But he does not look like. Oh, he is a good boy. Yeah, he he looks sort of like a wolf. I know what they're going for. Put put, put the good boy in the chat. Oh yeah, oh, gotcha, that's gotcha. A cute dog. Oh, there's one with him with Easter ears. <laughs> He's a Tamascan, so he's a, mix, a mixture okay. of a German Shepherd, Malamute, and Siberian Husky. Look at the, look at the oh, that's a very good boy. Was, yeah, that's that's Tuffy. Now, okay, so I found an old picture of Tuffy that I'm going to drop. Oh boy! And, and I'm going to tell you that this one had some wolf in him. No, that no. A, that's a coyote that they captured. <laughs> that uh, that animal is going to kill someone. Captured the, on this picture. Yeah, read it. Read it. State College's mascot doesn't look quite so alluring as Ramsey's. That's clearly from the UNC. <laughs> from uh, the UNC yearbook. <laughs> yearbook, yeah. I'm I'm now going to post a picture of the original NC State mascot. Oh boy. Oh god. Oh. Puppy. Bulldog. Okay. Not yep. bulldog. Is that that's, that's that's a Is pibble. That like a Jack Terrier? Or something? That's an early pibble. Okay, this is great. Those uniforms are also pretty sick. Those okay. baseball uniforms. So uh, apparently that animal that I picture I sent you actually is an actual wolf. I'm going to read a little bit from the <laughs> North Carolina State Special Collections page about the this. Wolf. Quote, the real wolf. So after, after the Bulldogs, quote, after Togo and Tigi is likely that NC State didn't have another live mascot for around 30 years. This would change in the 1940s with the addition of an actual wolf. The new mascot was a timber wolf named State. It would be NC State's mascot for several years, and 46 states sold the mascot to 25, for $25 to a traveling zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Welp. Peace. That's, inc that's incredible. Okay. In, All right. Inside of your final four, there are two wolf packs. Mm hmm I don't have anything else. I've just been trying to workshop that. Okay. I kept reading down in the article and got sad. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. The Timberwolf mascot was described as, quote, something of a pet, but still far from tamed. The animal presented no anything sorry. but a spirited appearance when displayed before a noisy, enthusiastic football crowd. How many people did it bite? It had to be just dozens. There's no way. <laughs> it's got two chains around its neck. <laughs> yes. Like, like, this was not... <laughs> Wait, the wolf's the wolf the wolf was two chains. You're telling me the wolf is two chains. <laughs> two chains. Oh, this is this is awful and hilarious. Oh wait, wait, I got I got a mascot walking a mascot. Hold up. Hold okay. up. In the Definitely chat. Go. This is the better one. Oh yes. <laughs> there we go. It's a paper mache mascot it had like old school crazy uh versus Walking the the at that point, this looks like more like a dog. This is no longer the wolf. Yeah, yeah this is just a husky. I also found another mascot shot for NC State. What that is I'm so that? About. What the fuck is that? Oh know. my god! Those are also <laughs> not where the pasties go. Yeah. No, very much not where the pasties go. <sighs> that was What's clearly done by like an all male band or something. This is, yeah, this is forty six. It looks like its body is like when you put a paper bag over your head and cut out holes for your eyes. Grandma, what oh, big to Never okay. mind. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> this, oh, this Mr. Wolf was a mechanical wolf built by a mechanical engineering student. At least students were led to believe it was mechanical. Oh, boy. I don't know what that means. This is like the medieval people where it's like, I know you've never seen a lion. Oh, I'm positive no. you've never seen a lion. Helms was determined to have a mechanical wolf at the next football game to help bolster student support to keep the wolf mascot. However, there was no time to build an actual mechanical wolf. So the next game, Helms was inside a crudely built wolf costume while another student walked behind him with what appeared to be a control box. <laughs> <laughs> no one gets inside the wolf. No questions were asked. 
what the fuck? NC State, what are you doing? Okay, sorry. Thank Gentle you. listener, I just need you to know that obnoxiously Pit Boyfriend is sitting next to me on the couch and has been sitting next to me on the couch the whole time. Um, and I showed him a picture of this and he went, it's a robot completely unprompted there we go see he would have been engineers he would have been he would have been the same thing being like whoa it's a fucking mechanical wolf there's a dude behind it with a control box it has to be mechanical mecha wolf mecha wolf anyways okay there you go okay what else do we have all right time to talk about the actual basketball that happened yeah um so south carolina is still undefeated uh I- iu indiana did did put a comeback in they played extremely well in the second half, but it was just a little bit too late, um, and they won. And then uh, they played they played uh, Oregon State today, and uh, it was just too much, too much, too much. Uh, they're so good. They're just really well put together. Cardoso inside is really good. They have a transfer from uh, Oregon named Pow Pow, and she's really good. It's just an excellent team. I mean, they're undefeated. O- Oregon so, State they're fans, Oregon State fans were like, "Yep, that's a really good team." We lost it. Yeah. yeah. Can't yeah. be mad about that a, one. They had an excellent year, Oregon State. They were picked to go 10th in the Pac-12, and they were a three seed in the NCAA tournament and put a scare into South Carolina today. Um, shout out to Reagan Beers, who has an incredible name. Uh, broke her nose earlier this season, so she's wearing, like, the the mask. Um, her brothers were there um, from the FIU team. I think Nicole right. Auerbach were uh, – Rowdy, Rowdy and Rocky Nicole. Beers? Yeah, we love we're, rowdy beer. Love Highly recommend the article from Nicole Auerbach on that in the Athletic. If you have the Athletic, um, it was very, very good because she talks about basically how they beat the shit out of her in the in the driveway playing pickup together, and that's what like made her the way that she is as a basketball player because she's rough and tumble inside, and she was a third team All American, so she's really good. See, they said she was Batman with the mask, but like that story is a Bane story. That, yeah, that yeah. is no one cared about me before I put on the mask. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, Gonzaga did not play very well against Texas. They couldn't really score. Um, NC State, uh, but we could discuss the uh, the shooting uh, stuff in a, mi- a few minutes. But Stanford did not shoot well from three in that game. Oh, that NC oh, State beat them. Uh, so I wonder why. There could, there could uh, we'll be some, There's something definitely happened. no specific something reason there for that. Happened. Anyway, anyway, um, UCLA, my beloved Bruins, lost to LSU. Um Elijah Johnson had a tremendous game. Um, Angel right. Reese were they, also were really they good. the milk and cookies or the dirty debutantes? Oh God! I can't UCLA remember. was 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 the milk and cookies. They were they were the milk and cookies. That's right. And that was that was verse the versus the Louisiana hot sauce. Are there no editors at the LA Times? I don't think I, so. I don't think there's a woman in the room because because someone you don't would even have, have to be a woman to realize that that shit's racist as fuck. Oh, I I know. I but dirty debutantes. That's uh, also deeply disturbing because, like, it's Los Angeles, one of the most diverse places in the world, and that's who's. I'm not even gonna. Yeah. The LA Times is is kind of kind of ridiculous at this point, especially their sports section. I mean, they still hire that Bill Plasky guy, and he's very racist. So. Oh, yeah, right. they uh, they laid off a bunch of people recently, so there might not be people in the room anymore. There. There you go. Cool. It felt it felt obvious. Anyways, sorry about that. So UCLA did have a great year. They were the two seed. Um, shout out to all of them. They had a really, really fun year. I enjoyed watching them play basketball this year, but LSU, really good team. Um, I, Kim will keep that person, that. but that's a different conversation. That that game, I, God. Like, the game was, was just like everybody was in foul trouble? Yeah, there was a was, lot of weird foul calls in that it game. It was just, I mean. It was unenjoyable to watch the it officials. It was, uh, seriously, like almost every possession there was a foul call, and like everybody was in yeah. Everybody was in foul trouble. Like, and on think, the on the account, I don't think it's I, to be to go big picture here. I, I don't yeah. think it's fruitful, especially with the ED thing, to like talk about fouls because no. yeah. I think the officials are professionals. They they know what they're doing. But in a yeah. game like that, it was it was overkill. It was a little too much. It was too much. It was it was too much. It was very noticeable. It was not. It, it there was no flow to the game whatsoever. No, uh, none. like you would none rarely get. You would rarely get like two or three possessions. It was kind of like one of the games where, like, a referee in 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 college football would, you know, they're calling a holding on like every single play or uh, pass interference just way too much. It was something like that. Uh, it's just, it's not enjoyable. But um, 
LSU did get the win. I feel like they just outlasted uh, UCLA and, and maybe depth uh, there kind of yeah, helped. Yeah, because the... I, I don't want to make excuses and say yeah. it was the official's fault, but Charisma Osborne and, and Kiki Rice are the guards for UCLA, and they were both in foul trouble basically the entire game. Yeah. So they just never were never able to get in the flow. But LSU also wasn't really in a flow. No, nobody was. There was no flow no. in that game. No, uh, no, no, it was, it was, it was a it was, it was a low flow Sweet Sixteen game in in Albany. Yeah. Albany. Albany. They put one of put put in one of those shower heads that's supposed to be eco friendly, but actually just makes your shower really suck. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, um, and then Caitlin Clark was Caitlin Clark. Uh, she had twenty nine and fifteen, and it didn't really feel like she played that well. It was, it was you know she's incredible, and they're going to play LSU tomorrow. So. Uh, no, no social media. Remember that that it's that is gonna one. feel like I for for me personally, like the game, like whatever happens, I just feel like it's gonna be <laughs> almost like the, the <laughs> I don't joke about this, but it's gonna be the entire end of the world on Twitter, like whichever way it goes, it's just gonna be insane. It is going to be. It's just a good reminder that twi- like, the Twitter is not the real world. No, it's not. But like Twitter and Instagram comments, they, I mean, my God, like this is, it's going to be ridiculous. I just hope it's a good game. I, I hope it's a really good game. I, it's it's going gonna, gonna to be a bigger yeah. of a game. That's, that's all I care about. Should be. Unless, unless uh, they're overly zealous with some of the um, officiating, but hopefully not. But, what happened to you, Andrew? Where'd you go? I'm stretching my legs. I've been sitting for a long time. Oh, okay. God. Your, 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 your audio you, went You weird. sound very far your away. Your just went very sense. far away. He's like, but I have, I, I, but I, have my head, I have my earplugs in. I'm using AirPods. Oh, weird. Then. Why do I sound far away? That doesn't you mean sound far sense. away. It was you just might like sound like echo, echoier because you're not talking into a wall. I don't know. Weird. Oh, maybe. Oh, I guess I'm talking into my uh, my screen. Oh, there you go. That's, like, that's way better right there. You sound better. No. I don't know. That's not. Like that's, I, I sat back down, and now I'm talking into the mm-hmm. laptop face, you know? I feel like yeah. that shouldn't have such a big acoustic effect, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Weird. There's another podcast I listen to where, like, I'd like one of the hosts will, like, get up and, like, fix a drink or something, like, while they're recording. And, like, it's definitely noticeable even on AirPods. So, I don't yeah, know. Weird. Okay, what else do we have in the women's side? So uh, USC will be playing tomorrow. Uh, Juju Watkins is excellent. She had 30 points. And uh, UConn versus Duke was also a very strange game. But Duke could not really score in the first three quarters. They had seven points in the first quarter. I remember that. This, this was, was this was like incredibly, yeah. Not very, not very many points. But folks, NC State is in the final four or in the final four for both men's and women's. Mm-hmm. Their women's team uh, started the year unranked, wasn't expected to be this good. And uh, they beat UConn early in the year. That put everybody on notice. Um, UConn went there and they won by like 15, I think, Ooh. if I remember the game correctly. But they're a really, really good team. What co- the coach, Westmore, is a really good coach. And uh, one of their guards, Azia Johnson, is just having an amazing tournament. She has had in the four games that they played, 19 versus Chattanooga, UT Chattanooga, uh, 22 against Tennessee. 29 against Stanford and 27 against Texas. But folks, this is the game where uh, it kind of all shit hit the fan here. Um, and some, some bad things have occurred with regards to the way that the court was built. Like, and we're, I'm yeah. calling it measurement gate, but yeah, it's not good. Not good. This, Jordan, would you like this, to explain? Yeah, this is somewhere before the game started, somewhere before the game started, someone noticed that the three-point lines weren't the same. The arcs were different. It was the distance from the baseline, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it, Yes, and it is noticeable on television yeah. that the three-point lines are different distances. And yet, there were multiple games played on this court and nobody addressed it this until is, like, like halfway three... through a game today. Yeah, is... it, would, it would be one thing if they had gotten both arcs wrong. Like symmetrically but... incorrect. Yes. It was asymmetrical. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this just feels like this would never happen in the men's game. No. Like, I like, mean, see also the like crappy locker rooms from last year. Right. And and so it feels like every time they make a point of like, 
we are fixing this thing. We, things are equal. We are equalizing it. And then it's, you know, oh, by the way, this court is incorrect. And I can understand how the players didn't feel it because you're in the zone, whatever, you know, generally where that line is, you glance at it. That's fine. But to, just for it to be wrong in, oh my God, for no one to notice it. And the funny thing is they wouldn't let people on the court or even later on tonight to measure about how off it was. Like the NCAA is their half-ass apology, whatever, but no one is, they're not saying, they've said they they're will not say how, how, how far much of a shot difference, uh, like difference it was in each one. But I mean, just looking at the picture, I mean. Can I give my theory? I think the bigger one is the men's, the men's line and the smaller one is the women's line. That's my theory because it's slightly different. I mean, we always the joke. The women's line's a little closer. We joke about, it, was it where the MIAC plays their title game or the SWAC? Where they have all four lines? I think it's the MIAC. They have the like, thing is they've recently switched it that the women's line is the same as the men's line. So, like, they got it wrong. I mean, look, here, here's what I'll say. If you want competence in basketball operations, I don't know what you're doing at the Moda Center in the first place, okay? Like, yeah, that is true. You, there should be a mountain of evidence that this is where well-run basketball goes to die. Well, I mean, you know, the Miami Heat did just, just win a game by 60 points over Portland, so... Ouch. I'm it's devastating. You know, the, the Portland Trailblazers, they have a deal, the McDonald's hundred point play. If they score one hundred points in a game, there's free nuggets in the McDonald's app in at uh Portland area McDonald's, right? Mm -hmm. It is staggering in the modern NBA how hard it is for them to win free nuggets for their fans. Is this like the Pistons win Wingstop thing? W win with Wingstop, you know? <laughs> yeah, except except yeah. like the Pistons losing is kind of accepted. Like, yeah, like maybe not quite this much, but it's like, yeah, they'll lose more games than they win. Like, I feel like in the modern NBA, like struggling to hit 100 points is not a good sign. I mean, they're, they're, people hit 100 in the modern NBA all the time. Yeah, 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 but not not the Blazers with the lineups that they're running out um, I, because they just don't have like lead guards. So, by the way, the uh, the stat here on the NC State Stanford game, which was not the game today, that was the cause of everybody realizing, oh shit, these are wrong. That Stanford NC State game happened at the same uh, center at the Moda Center in Portland on, I guess, uh, Friday. Uh, one team on one side of the court, the teams were three of 20 from three. Um, on the other side of the court, the teams were nine of 22 from three. So oh, I don't know if that's a coincidence. Oh, that's mm. what, you know, is it, is but what, you want to hear something, hilar I don't hear so, something hilarious? But, yeah, go. The longer side was the one that people shot better from. So oh. interesting. Okay, that's weird. So, so I then, don't know what to make of that. I mean, did, do we know which side was wrong? I don't. If they know. if they won't measure, then no. No, maybe they're both wrong. wrong. They could they could both be wrong. I I guess I'm confused. Does the NCAA actually do anything other than put on two basketball tournaments anymore? Yes, they they yell at Jim Harbaugh for buying a recruit a sandwich. Okay, so it was a hamburger. All right, that's a sandwich. sandwich. That's a sandwich. Oh God, no, no, we're not doing no. that. Nope, nope, we're not doing no. that. Okay, um, I fucking I refuse. <laughs> Can I read the statement? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, the NCA. Oh, I'm reading the beveled statement, so apologies if I get oh any of the words wrong. <laughs> the NCA was notified today that the three point lines at the court at the Moda Center in Portland are not the same distance. The two head coaches were made aware of the discrepancy. They were the ones that noticed the discrepancy, y'all, and were made aware of the discrepancy and elected to play a complete game on the court as it is, rather than completing the court and delaying the game, correcting the court and completing the game. The court will be corrected before tomorrow's game in Portland. See, so I I heard it was some some lawyer up in like the third tier that spotted it, and like brought it to people's attentions. At least that's what I've read. But this there, is there's like video move. at the beginning of the game when they like came into the game of the coaches like walking it out. You know, like doing the thing where you like, doing the, walk the to footsteps. See how far it is. Yeah, yeah, the footsteps from the from the, the free throw line to the the arc because that's where it's very obvious that it's different. I just mm -hmm. love the fact that like stepping off your distances, just like marching band becomes an official unit of measure. 
No, that yeah, no, it's, and it's marching band as hell. Like I, I know that my step is 22 and a half inches. I can measure this. <laughs> I mean, so we'll, we'll find out tomorrow, which one was off by which one looks different, I guess. I guess they, they probably, I have bet they won't even put a, they probably won't even put out a statement. They're just going to change it. They're, they're going to change it. And they're not going to say anything. Yeah, I mean, Saying saying that the issue, like in their statement, was that the three point lines were different sizes, kind of implies that like rather than like a set size that they should be, it's like they just need to be the same, right? Like if there was somehow like both sides just had like a two two foot three point line, right? Like just super close to the hoop, yeah, it'd be all right. Like it's symmetrical, right? Oh no, I I like this. We're gonna make baseball or we're gonna make basketball a little bit more like baseball, and every court is gonna have its own three point line. I, I could all totally, gonna be different. I could totally see the Moda Center just having much shorter three point lines to try to make all those shots that Dame hit like seem more impressive. Like, <laughs> whoa, he's okay. shooting way behind I, the line. I got nice. Are there any teams that would say like, let's get rid of the three point line that have like no shooters? I'm trying to think, I don't know. I can, can I? Can I mean, the Blazers now that they don't have the game. <laughs> can I argue for a like a progressive jackpot three point line? Whereas if people like as the game goes, the shot from behind the three is worth more, but the line moves back, mm. so it becomes can more I, risk yeah. reward. Can I say something stupid? I really think that at some point as a gimmick, at least in like stuff like the All Star Game and the Summer League, they're going to add a four point line and see what happens. Oh, I, they've already done that. I yeah, mean, they kind of did it in the All Star Game stuff, right? Logo yeah, threes so are worth five points now. Don't at me. The All Star Game this year, they didn't play the actual All Star Game on this court, but all of the other for the NBA. By the way, this is the NBA. Mm -hmm. The other games were played on a electronic court yeah i remember that That was basically like it had imagine just like a giant i guess screen that you're playing on top of so they can just change the court like change the markings so everything can so they can just like up oh, like four point spot here and it's like their real time on the court or like a little like light, light up hot spots where if you yeah. take a spot oh yeah that's that's what they did during i think the celebrity all-star game this year like they would they would I, it was branded. I, I'm assuming by Ruffles. It'd be like, oh, that's like the Ruffles spot or something. Or like or, Sprite. You know, Sprite has a big. No, oh, it's no, Starry it's now. Starry now. It's yeah. Starry. They, no, they, Sprite they... is still Sprite. It's Sierra. No, 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 no. But, but, but Starry. The, the, the lemon lime soda that sponsors the NBA is switched ah. to Starry. Yeah, it's uh, for some reason the NBA only gets sponsored by lemon lime soda. How far? No other sodas are are involved. How far back do I have to shoot to unlock the multi ball? Ooh. Oh. Because if we're turning basketball basketball into pinball, which I am a thousand percent in favor of, this is something that I need to have. Yeah, it needs multi ball. I'm with you. Maybe okay. just like multi ball <laughs> at, at like certain periods of of like certain quarters. Oh yeah, yeah. no. If you hit something, like if you wedge the ball, it gets locked, and you get the wedgie. Balls. If you wedgie. get the wedgie, it's the multi. Yeah, wedgie, what multi if ball. Get a no, if you get a wedgie, you should automatically lose. Actually, that's your that's a ball <laughs> lock. Yep. And game, it's going to play like, like the Sonic the Hedgehog Green Hill Zone, like hurry up music. Mm -hmm. Oh, you 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 see my vision? Perfect. Yeah, it's like getting the switch snitch in Quidditch. Like you're done. Mm -hmm. I think it's over. Can, can I talk about D two basketball for a second? Sure. Definitely. Minnesota State. They got the sweep. They won both men's and women's. Ooh. two championships in the same year that's amazing and so difficult to do and also possible in d1 and also possible in d1 could be this year you're absolutely right actually it's probably twice it's twice as likely at this point i think well uconn uconn has not made the women's final four yet oh, that's right that's right just as of yet maybe so, yeah. on tuesday they have this is this is absolutely incredible uh this is their first men's basketball d2 championship in school history Hell yeah. And this is their second in women's in women's in school history. The, also hell yeah. The men beat Nova Southeastern, the Sharks, and the women beat Texas Women's University, the Pioneers, out of Denton, Texas. Nova Ooh. Southeastern is a, a juggernaut, too. That's a big win. Yeah. They're also, the, Nova Southeastern is also very good at something else. Like Being indoor, sharks. Indoor track or something. I don't know. Oh, I was going to say soccer. Okay, so that's sort of where I am at basketball. Like, where we're at heading into the sort of the last week, we're almost at the end of the basketball season, which is making people panic. Is the basketball final going to be on ABC or like or CBS? 
The uh, men's is on TBS, True TV, and TNT, and the women's is on ABC. Okay. So the women's one is on a real channel that people watch, and the men's one is where they show Impractical Jokers. Got it. Yes. Yes. And they want the, the main broadcast. The main broadcast is on uh, TBS. Okay. Oh, so it's where they show the Big Bang Theory reruns. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes, yes. And young Sheldon, presumably as well. Nick at Night shows Young Sheldon. If you want to talk about how far things have fallen, Nick at Night shows young Sheldon. Nick at Night used to mean The things. faces I'm looking at right now, listeners, are just oh, horrified. Horrified. Yeah, I know. I'm just going to go crumble into dust. It's uh-huh. fine. It's not, that's not even what Nick at Night is intended for. I, no, no cable channel has an intent anymore. Okay? It is just, it exists to keep something on the air because they have paid for it for a couple years. And they need a place to show Teen Titan Go reruns on Cartoon. Don't even don't even get me started on the downfall of like the Animal Planet. Oh, I feel like the one the one cable channel that I will like see on my channel guide, and I'll be like, hell yeah, that's a like that's that's the essence of this channel. I feel like is TNT, Mm -hmm. not necessarily in their like they. I don't know if they even have original programming anymore, but I feel like I'll always be like on my channel guide i'll see what movie is on tnt and i'll be like oh that's a tnt ass but like oh shit they're playing the accountant like hell yeah tnt that's tnt right there the accountant's on netflix now by the way oh i know like netflix sent me an email about it they were like yeah this is <laughs> watching for you, you've been buddy. watching and accountant like, an awful lot man you should watch it here too it's it's very funny when netflix like sends me things and it's like no, this is a good match, but like I just watched this like on another <laughs> platform. <laughs> well, it's like when you go to buy something and then Amazon is like, "Hey, you want to buy another lawnmower? You were just no, looking that's, at lawnmowers. That's, you definitely yes. want another lawnmower." That's my Netflix algorithm. Like it's always just like, like you just watched this Liam Neeson last month when it was on Hulu, but now what if it's you on wanted Netflix. to watch Taken again. I mean, if I wanted to watch Taken again, I'd watch Taken too because that's Taken again. <laughs> uh, Arthur, are you apologizing to CBS? Yes, I, I do have to do this. So I feel like every year I have this right. I feel like the only time I watch CBS is March Madness because they don't broadcast college basketball. Well, they do, but not college basketball. I watch outside of March Madness. Basically, and just it's like they have one college football game a week in the fall, and like that's it, right? Like there's just there's so little I would watch on cbs and so i always every year i joke i make the same joke every year because that's how i roll about cbs and like oh like every march madness i see their ads for their shows and that's like the only time i see it and every time it's like wow like that looks bad and i I have to make an apology um you know i have to do the the shack i was not familiar with in this case your television programming because um so two things right number one I saw a commercial for a show. It's some like fire. It's called Fire Country. It's like a firefighter show. And in the the commercial for the show, they had a fire tornado. Which like, man, I've never heard of this show. I, you know, like it's it has not been on my radar. But just hearing fire tornado, what like that's I'm I'm sold. Can like, I, cut I you probably. Off? I watched the first episode of this show because it was just <laughs> on and I was watching uh see C- I don't even remember what was on C I think the Chiefs AFC championship game was on CBS this year. Mm-hmm. Or uh, I don't even I don't I follow fo- co- I follow college football very closely and I follow the NFL. I used to be a Jets fan, no longer a Jets fan. Mental health is important. Um but uh I don't know which one's the AFC and which one's the NFC and I refuse to learn. Yeah, was, no. CBS though, had like, the Super Bowl this year, so you're you're saying But it that. was it, it was the – no, but which championship game did they have? They have AFC. Okay. So it was the AFC championship game ended, and I was at a bar, and the, the first episode of Fire Country was on, and it was terrible. Oh, there was see, a landslide, a and it was just – the acting was awful. That's a bummer to hear because, like, I just heard Fire Tornado, and I was like – I was in, but it's, I don't know. I will say, was, have you watched nine one one? It's like oh, I love nine one one. Like if you like nine one one, then you good. might like it. But the okay. acting is really bad. Okay, well that's that's not a very good for me. So, so yeah, long I as feel... the fire tornado is a good actor, I think it's fine. Yeah, 
<laughs> no, I I Don't will say like complete sidebar, but like scripted TV being on in a bar can be incredibly entertaining. The, the sound was on too. Oh, oh that's Jesus great! Christ. The most, oh my god! The most like entertaining Law and Order SVU I ever saw was when I was in a bar that just for some reason Law and Order SVU was on TV. And it was the episode where I want to say it was Logan Paul guest starred. Oh, God. And, and this was like before he, well, like, people knew who he was, I guess. Or like, I mean, he probably had some like social media following, but he wasn't like, like, I know who he was. But um, like, he was just kind of like well known enough that people were like, oh, like, this guy sucks. And I guess, spoiler alert for the episode, the whole bar like cheered like it was a sporting event when ice T shot and killed him. <laughs> yeah. It's a good time. Like that's the only way I want to watch law and order SVU now. Uh, but I gotta, I gotta up, uh, do say one other thing about CBS programming. Um, so the other show that I've been seeing commercials for during March madness, that's like, and, and this not in like the fire country sense of like, like hell yeah, fire tornado, but uh, they have a new show. It's called Elsbeth. And I would like, I would actually watch it. Like, just you have any idea what it's about, though? They keep talking yeah. about it, and I have no idea what it's about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so it's like a, I like, I guess it's like a procedural, right? She, like, Elsbeth, um, I'm blanking on the actress's name who stars in it. Um, she was on Claws, which I love, I love that show. Um, but it's like she is like a Karen lawyer Prescott? and she's, um, solving crimes um or like she's she's basically like it's, it's like a procedural but it's like oh god damn it this is very a good, oh, this is a good wife name. spinoff this is another yeah, fucking good in, wife spinoff in... <laughs> yeah it is. i've never so i've never seen any of those but i'm just saying just based on it being so so i'm just going on wikipedia right now wikipedia describes it as a police procedural comedy drama television series like oh god i'm i'm it's, i think it's i'm every in TV it's nothing show. it's nothing no, no no i'm saying but i'm saying like just based on that who is in it and and i like i i don't know if i'm gonna have time to watch this because right like i have a full-time job i'm doing this podcast like all this stuff. but like i'm gonna i'm gonna try to check it out and that's something that I have not said unironically about a CBS show in I don't know how long. Listener, this is where we remind you that Arthur had us watch Time Cop. Yeah, his tastes, his tastes have always been suspect. I mean, I think Arthur, we kind Arthur, of volunteered really ourselves you to, report... to watch Time Cop. Yeah, we pulled ourselves. Arthur, I really do want you to report back on Fire Country if you do watch it, because I want to know what you think and if it's your thing. Because yeah, well, it's not my thing, but it I... might be your thing. I will have to figure out which episode has the fire tornado and just watch that one. Not the pilot. The pilot was the first one, and that's the one I watched. It was not very good television. Fire tor- fire tornado for Emmy. They, it was like they were introducing characters, but then those characters either like spoilers died in the uh, the whatever it was like fire tornado. <laughs> not the fire tornado. I didn't watch the fire tornado episode. <laughs> okay, wait. Wait. Um, can I can I address something in the show notes? Yeah. Who likes the Get Back song by Ludacris? It's a little overkill, but it's a good song. It's definitely no, no, Arthur. No. Yeah, that's that's also good. <laughs> I also put that there. No, honestly, the, the so Nissan has been running this commercial where like it's it, I can't the commercial doesn't do anything except just be like yeah like we license Get Back by Ludacris, but also they can't play like most of the song because of the content of the lyrics. <laughs> so it's like it's very much a just like. Yep, we can play these like four bars of this song for you here in our commercial. Um, but like, man, I f- like I forgot about that song. That song's a banger. Okay, our draft for the evening is going to be Easter candy draft. The rules are oh. serpentine draft. Order is Beth Pickerel Jordan, Kamish Arthur Andrew. By Easter candy, I mean any candy you could possibly get on Easter. I will go, I will open this up as broadly as possible just because it's funnier that way. And Beth, you have first pick. Um, bum, 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 bum. I will take Cadbury mini eggs. Oh, you solid chocolate it. ones. You, okay. Milk or dark. Oh, God damn. Um, there goes my first pick. That was my first <laughs> like, pick too. Geez. I'll go dark. You. 
Wow, that's a, that's a one one pick right there. That's here. oh, I'm just I'm so angry already. Pick girl, you're gonna have to dig yourself out of that hole. No, I don't. Reese's peanut butter eggs. Hey. That was number. Oh, see, this that's is, that's yeah. This I got, is, I'm, this is going I regret as, my as draft position expected. already. Well, I gotta I gotta actually word wrap these properly. Hold on, give me a second. Also, I, I while Jordan does that, I just want all of you to know that for the last five minutes of the last segment. Jordan was sharing, sharing his screen and resizing the window, and we could see him resizing the window. Format wrapping. Uh, wrapping. Oh, yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. Not me. Oh, not wrap. Oh, oh no. my god. Wrap. Oh my god. You should be now. able to double click on the boundary, and sometimes that will resize them all. We're, we're telling yeah, him how to use just Google auto Sheets. Resized. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh my god! I hate it's all of you. Not fine. I hate all of you. No, you're doing. You're doing great, Jordan. Uh, so you got it. You got it. Lower line menu. instead of center line. I hate all of you. <laughs> I hate all of you. Next, it's my turn. Shit. So all the good ones got picked already too, which is annoying. Or at least not all the good ones. Just there are more than I, I, I like that you have candies. four rounds set for this draft, and after two picks, you're saying all the good ones are drafted. <laughs> <laughs> you are also the only one who knew the draft was coming. So like, yeah, you could knew. have a big board. The rest of us are not picking things. We're flying. Yeah. Fine, whatever. Fuck it. I'm getting the Cadbury solid mini eggs. Badbury. The Cadbury. Badbury. The Cadbury solid mini eggs, but the milk chocolate version. They're not as good. But they will do in a pinch. When someone else That's a spin off of Bad Bunny. <laughs> Bad Burry. Kamish, what is yours? First round pick. Just, just give me the straight up Cadbury cream egg. Oh. Mm. I'm not a cream egg man. Yeah, uh, overrated, but you do fine. you. I mean, this is I, I lost my first two picks, so I'm already, you know. Oh, this, is, on your heels. Listener, this is how I learned that Jordan thinks Cadbury has two R's in it. Yeah. Oh, it is not? Okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> control F? It's Cadbury, not Burberry. Bur- Cadbury. If you hit Cadbury. Control H, it'll give you find and replace automatically. Wow, I don't need all of you. Oh my god. <laughs> You're doing great. This is great. I'm really you, all just find and replaced, you just find and replaced Cadbury. I'm, I'm, really <laughs> I'm so happy right now. I have so you. many things about Google Sheets. I, I, I love you so much. Yeah. Our, our listeners are going to get a lot of good I, I know. Google Sheets. Right, we don't even have candy. our professional spreadsheet. Oh, gosh. There. Okay, let's see. Man, I mean, how, like, how solid is this? Does this have to be good for kids? No. Okay, I'm going to say little, like, airplane bottles of screwball <laughs> peanut butter vodka. <laughs> uh, is that candy? Sure, we'll call it. Sure. If it, Wait, isn't, screw, isn't screwball whiskey technically? Or yeah, it's sorry, whiskey. screwball. It's, it is okay. whiskey. It is peanut butter whiskey. In the same way that Fireball is cinnamon whiskey. Andrew, your pick. You get back All right, to I've picks. discovered. I've discovered something that I'm going to definitely try tomorrow or Tuesday. Twix makes an egg, mm. so I'm definitely putting that because okay. I love Twix. And then I'm gonna go with like when you were a kid, you would get the full bunny that was hollow on the inside. So that, but dark chocolate. Mm. Trojan Rabbit, got it. Yes. Arthur. Oh, no. I got to pick again. I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> um, but see, Not this fair. is hard because I don't really like candy. Um, but I'm going to say um, I feel like it would be kind of weird to just put these in like an Easter egg, like one of those plastic Easter eggs because they'd be loose. But pretzel M&M's. I'm just going to say that. Like, you could theoretically put those in a... Uh... I'm just trying to imagine Lucy's of M&M's in an egg. That feels so creepy for some reason. I'm not sure why. I, I don't, yeah, I don't know why, because it's really not that different than jelly beans. Right. Well, I wouldn't put Lucy's of jelly beans in an egg either. I got, I used to just get jelly beans and eggs. I mean, look, the uh, the list of like candies that I eat is very short. So we're we're already getting pretty low there. Okay. Kamish. Just give me the Starburst jelly beans. Damn it. Those are the good ones. We went a long way without with uh before we got to something that wasn't chocolate. Yeah, this yeah, is I clearly was, a chocolate. I just, we definitely no, have a chocolate I, I, bias. Straight away. I mean the peanut butter whiskey isn't chocolate. Uh, I will say my for my next pick, I'm gonna take just the strawberry starburst. <laughs> I you like would. I like the strawberry ones a lot. One of my favorite things to do used to be to take all the flavors and like mush them into a straw- starburst ball. 
What the fuck? You like, were just trying to make an everlasting gobstopper from the Gene Wilder. Why are movie. you like so this? You, you, you unpeel like 20 of them, but then mush it. Like, I mean, like, it was like an apple. The size of an apple. And you bite into it like what? an apple. What the fuck? What? You ever did this? And then you can no, never no. open your teeth again. No, yeah. You just like, you eat it like an apple. You merge like 20 or 24 of them together. It's a ball. And then you eat it like an apple. It's great. I want you so to sure. imagine. If that you're a dentist, <laughs> don't Listeners, listen to I just want to remind you that this man is the only one on our podcast who has an Ivy League education. Also the only one on the podcast who has a doctorate. Please imagine the sound so that Jordan's molars make as they attempt to dislodge <laughs> themselves from this probably, horrible molasses ball he has made. Similar to the sound of exploding Taco Bell box. Oh, yeah, that, that slurp <laughs> sound. <laughs> hey, Dad, do you remember that time you yeeted your fillings into the sun? Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, so strawberry starburst, enough to make like an apple-sized mound of them. Oh, why don't they make a solid strawberry, strawberry, straw, strawberry egg? Stra- starburst. So think, think like the Reese's egg size, but just made of a solid starburst. Because it would eat people's fillings, Jordan. Big girl, what's your next choice? Um, I am going to take the Cadbury caramel eggs. That was where I was going next. I've never Which had I, the caramel eggs. Are they better than the Oh, cream? they're so much better than the cream eggs. Yes. Yeah. The, the cream made liquid the cream made liquid is just It's too sweet. I can't have it because it's straight nougat, but if I recall correctly, the caramel eggs are a vast improvement. Is it I straight will... nougat? Is that what it is? It's like very liquidy yeah. and way too sweet. Cannot has. Has actual egg. There we go. Okay. Who um knows? okay. I will take the Dove Chocolate Springtime Mix. Ooh, what's in that? It has uh, it has milk Dove Chocolate, dark uh, regular dark chocolate, and the and a caramel filled milk chocolate, and it is in uh, lovely Easter foil colors. I don't know if we've ever had this discussion on here. Are we all dark chocolate people? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm no. No. <laughs> no. No. It dark is fine, but. No, I, I prefer like milk or white. So what what or, percentage are we talking about? Shirt. What percentage huh? are we getting to in dark chocolate before we start back? Fuck me out? up. Okay, <laughs> you and me both. You and me both. As dark I as ate it can ninety-two percent dark chocolate went the to other hurt. day. It went to hurt. That I ate ninety-two yeah. percent. Give me that shit that starts to taste like coffee. Yeah. That, no, I just I was like, no, I'm done. I I can't. Like this is like the only chocolate I could eat right now. Like no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not. No, I'm done. I can handle dark chocolate. Like the, the Hershey's special dark or whatever. Yeah, I can do that in those mixes or whatever, but I'm not I'm not seeking it out. I don't I don't I drink mean, too th- much those, I don't eat too much chocolate. Those in the, the special dark, those are like those are nice. Hmm? Uh there is a really great one of my favorite chocolatiers in Dallas, Do Sweet Chocolate, has a chocolate bar called Holiday in Cambodia that is a hundred percent no sugar. Oh, it's one hundred percent dark. It has sesame, black sesame seeds, and balsamic vinegar powder. Interesting. You have to you have to let it sit on your tongue because if you bite into it, your jaw will just like yeah. flinch on it. So if you let it melt on your tongue, though, you get really beautiful with the savory the savory notes of everything. It's really good. Hmm. Okay, good to know that we're all oh, okay. chocolate people, except for what? What the one. hell? But all right, is that? Is it weird to know that we're all masochists for dark chocolate? Does that make you think of us differently? No, it's just, it's fine. Your, your, your taste buds are weird, but okay. That's fine. I'm with that. Beth, you get a second pick, by the way. Um, hmm. I will go with, let's go with edible Easter grass. Ooh. That's a thing. Mm-hmm. It is a thing. Huh. It's coconut. Like every time I've had edible Easter grass, it's just been like shredded coconut dye green. Or you mean something else? Um, no, no, I mean the coconut ones. Okay, that's good stuff. Yep. Okay, pick girl. Plus, it's fun this to is... trick your siblings into thinking that they can eat all the Easter grass, not just the ones that came in the packet. <laughs> also, the gr- the green poops. The green. Oh poops. God. Ah. Uh, also, a side effect of black jelly beans, from what I hear. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you eat them in the amounts that I do. Yeah, that'll happen. I mean, when I was when I visited Coastal Carolina, I mean, it was teal. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. You pooped teal. I did. I'm trying to imagine a Coastal Carolina fan that's like, I need to shit teal. I have to shit teal. <laughs> Well, no, no, no. What it was? I mean, Jimmy Chadwell was... canonically pisses teal, mm-hmm. or he How did. Much, no, 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 no. I'm telling you, that's what these people consuming. That happened. No, see, it was so like <laughs> it was the <laughs> media food, right? Because like when you're media, when you cover an event, like all the food, like you get the the like the spread, the whole spread catered, right? And like they went so hard on like adding teal food coloring to like anything that they could think of. That would make sense, yeah. So, Incredible. like, when you're covering an ACC tournament, eventually you're just full of teal. <laughs> hey, girl, you got a second choice. A uh, third choice, sorry. You have uh, so far Reese's Peanut Butter Eggs and Cadbury Caramel Eggs. This will likely be controversial because uh, I know Obnoxiously Pit Boyfriend hates these. He's wrong. Give me Whopper Robin's Eggs. Whoa. Ooh. I hadn't okay. thought about those in ages. Those are good. I fucking love those. They're my favorite. I like that. I think for my next pick, so I have, so far I have the Cadbury solid mini eggs and strawberry starburst large enough to form into an apple that you therefore eat like an apple. Hold on, I got to add the rest of that to it. Uh, I'm going to kick you from the call. I wish I could. Or to the size of an apple that you eat like an apple. Got Are you going to make a graphic for this? But okay. That's not incredibly cursed or anything. There we go. Perfect. I'm, I'm just going to post this thing straight. I'll just post this straight up. Uh, I think my thir- my next choice is going to have to be the one that brought me to the dance. Uh, all the licorice jelly beans. I know no one's going to take them. I, can't, I could have gotten them as, a, as, a, as an unsigned draft pick. Yeah. But... Sometimes you want, you'd want what you want. The heart wants what the heart wants. The heart wants just sixteen heart failure. So Finish? this one, this one is 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 kind of like a really. I think it's only like a local candy. Okay. That's that's like Louisiana based. I don't think it's like really distributed throughout. Um, I have a hard time finding these in like San Antonio. There may be in like Houston. But in New Orleans, there's something called a heavenly hash. It's a heavenly hash like egg. Uh, it's got it's a marshmallow like a milk chocolate egg with marshmallow on the inside, along with some roasted almonds. And it's just like an egg shape. It's it's probably I'm looking at um, it. It is it is from um, like Elmer's, which Elmer's candy is based out of New Orleans, and it, it's it's my favorite like. Um, that looks really good. Easter candy. They have like, there's a couple of different things that they have. Like Elmer's, they have the pecan egg, which is fantastic. They also have uh, the gold brick egg, which is basically solid chocolate with with some nuts in it. And then they have the heavenly hash, which is, which is, I mean, it, I don't think it's like a big national thing. I don't think it's anywhere. But I every, like, I would have. To call my mom or my dad or like ship me some of these. Gotcha. Um, it's Easter. Send me some. Or they would. My mom would be like, "Here you go. Here's your Easter basket." Still, and I'm like, like in my 30s, getting heavenly hash candy. That's fine. But yeah, that's that's my third pick. It's not a big, big name pick, but I, I went really, really local in New Orleans. Uh, Arthur, you're up next. Just so you know, still on the board for you. You have pastel M and M's. You have Peeps. No one's picked Peeps yet. Milk chocolate yeah, I'm, kisses. I'm not picking peeps. Uh, you also have, yeah, you got options. Well, I mean, I'm, I can't think of anything, um, you know, even with you suggesting things for me. So I'm just going to go with this candy that's sitting on my desk right beside me right here. What is that? Um, it's, uh, what does it say? It says dark chocolate sea salt caramels is target brand. Okay. Um, it's just sitting on my desk right here. So, you know, it's in my line of sight and I'm out of ideas. There we go. <laughs> Okay, Andrew, you get a double pick. Uh, Lind- Lindor uh, eggs. Ooh. Mm. And uh, I'm going to go a little out of the box here, and I'm, I'm going to try these and report back if I can find them. Uh, Dr. Pepper Peeps. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. The Pride of Bethlehem, by the way. Do y'all, do y'all like Peeps? Is Peeps something y'all like? Yes. Okay. They're, they're uh, fine also, with me. Yeah. Potentially controversial. 
I like peeps best when they have been like open. No, don't no. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. What are you I'm not saying I want them to be all the way stale, but I want the the sugar on the outside to have formed a little Eeps bit. Peeps are good for about 30 seconds. No, after I want, you I want open a package. Crispy peeps. No. Peeps they're, they're are good not. when you are attempting to do peep jousting in the microwave. <laughs> that is also accurate. <laughs> peep jousting. Do I need to look that up? Oh, they get so puffy. They, they do. Microwave, you microwave, if you microwave peeps, they explode. You put, so you well, put two toothpicks. Well, if you microwave them briefly enough, they just get huge. So you, exactly. So what you want to do is you put, is you get two uh, paper plates and you put a peep on each plate and you stick a uh, toothpick in each peep. So that they are pointed at each other, and then you see which peep is able to deflate the other peep when they expand in the microwave. <laughs> Every uh, Arthur, Easter candy should have its own Thunderdome. That's all I'm saying. Uh, yeah, uh, Arthur, what's going to be your fourth pick? Since you've already picked it on your desk. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just like on my phone right now, googling candy. Um, <laughs> I'm going to assign you Turkish delight. No, I I got one for you. I got one Go. for you because I like. Okay, so what if you just pick a, can a candy from a completely different holiday? Um, and I'm like, yeah, theoretically, you could probably fit those into Easter eggs. So I'm just going to go with Hanukkah Gelt. Okay, uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> really? There we go. Yep. Done. Hey, I love dark chocolate coins. They're great. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm not an Easter person. So uh, uh, yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to pull from other holidays. Kavish, what do you got? Give me the uh, Hershey's um, egg assortment, which is is just basically it's like the milk cho uh, milk chocolate polka dot and cookies and cream special dark in the extra creamy eggs. I, I'm gonna just go with that. my last choice. I'm gonna. I, go I love with, an assortment. I'm gonna go with a Kinder egg. Mm. Uh, my like the shitty American ones or the real ones. The real ones. Thank you. Okay. The real ones. I I love Kinder Buenos. Like I love Kinder stuff. Like it, I love hazelnut. So it all tastes good to me. But yeah, the German ones are the best, or the Canadian ones even. The ones that you sneak across the border because, mm -hmm. because they're not legal in the States because kids eat toys. Here. They are not illegal because they're a choking hazard. Oh, this really? This is a common misconception. They are illegal because it is illegal to put non-food items inside of food. Okay. In a world in which the fortune cookie exists. Yeah, I wait. Will, I will die we... mad about this. Technically, you can eat paper. Oh man, I should have picked fortune cookies. That would have also been very good. Hey girl, you're I mean, close. honestly, going going out to get Chinese food is probably closer to Easter tradition. something I would do on Easter than anything with candy. This is something that I cannot believe no one else has taken. Dark chocolate peanut butter egg made by Church Lady. I don't know what this is. What solid. This is. It's a solid choice. I don't know what this is. Do you not have church ladies making homemade peanut butter eggs where you're from? No. Oh, well, this is very much a thing where we are. I'm oh, in, this is a. I'm in San Antonio. There's, there's no, they're not doing that. Oh, every church lady makes homemade peanut butter eggs here. I've had two different varieties of of homemade church lady peanut, or probably church lady peanut butter egg, brought to me by people at my actual job. In, in the last week, anything in Ohio too with the Buckeyes? I feel yeah, like that's like a like thing. That, but it's not exactly that. Yeah, and do you, yeah. Do you have to go to church. No, no. Okay, okay. I am a heathen, okay, but people yeah, make too. them, and then they appear at your work, for example. Yeah, in various degrees of molten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're very squishy on the inside. Usually, they're huge. Yeah. Also, ten out of ten. There you go. And Beth, you get the last pick. Um. I'm certain that this will be controversial, particularly given the conversation we've had so far, but we will take the humble Neko wafer. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. That's uh, all right. So, so candy hearts are still on the board. Wait, no wrong holiday. Wrong Shit. Holiday. Shit. Wrong holiday. I was like, <laughs> no one picked candy hearts. Wait a second. That's not an Easter candy. I wonder why. I wonder why nobody picked them. Okay, so, so sweetie, the Easter Bunny. So our teams are Beth. You get the Cadbury solid mini eggs, the dark chocolate version. The Dove. I'm just imagining, like you know, like Jesus giving us a candy heart that says "Hug me." <laughs> <laughs> Died for you. 
uh, edible Easter grass and the lovable Neko wafer. Pick girl, you get I, I would love, no, I'm imagining the, the one that Jesus gives you, the, the candy heart. It says, be back soon. <laughs> uh, <but> <laughs> <laughs> uh, pick girl, you get the risen. Reese's peanut butter risen. egg, the Cadbury caramel eggs, the Whopper Robin eggs, and the dark chocolate peanut butter egg the church lady made. I get milk chocolate Cadbury eggs, enough Starburst to eat like an apple, all the licorice jelly beans and Kinder Egg Kamish, Cadbury cream eggs, Starburst jelly beans, Heavenly Hash, and the Hershey's Egg Assortment. Arthur, you get minis of peanut butter whiskey, pretzel M&Ms, dark chocolate sea salt caramels, the Target brand, and Hanukkah Gelt and Andrew, the Twix egg, dark chocolate hollow bunny, the Lint Lindor eggs, and the Dr. Pepper peeps. Thank you all. Can we take a second to appreciate the way that you spelled Hanukkah? Yeah. Did, did I totally mess it up? You uh-uh. did. Please Hana spell out. it. Hana. Hana. No, no, no. no. Before you delete it, spell it for the listeners. H-A-N-N-A-U-A-K-A-H. Hanuaka. <laughs> Hanuaka Montana. Hey, closer. <laughs> no, you had it a slash word. <laughs> I'm never typing in front of you assholes again. <laughs> just, I'm never oh using God, machine I can't in front of you do assholes the presentation again. I got to do for work on Thursday. It's never doing this fun. again. Weird. This- Nobody took candy corn. I like candy corn. It's fine. I enjoy Boy, candy, it. I like candy the, canes are still on the board too. Candy canes still on the board. <laughs> all of you. With the that, auto mix. I, I don't have to. Picked. I don't have to sit here and listen to more. I can end the recording at any time. I'm going to. I hope yeah, but everyone had a good time. I hope everyone had a good weekend. Uh, buy chess boards. Join our Discord. And all these people are. Don't go on social media on Monday. If yes. the defiling mold reappears in the house after the stones have been torn out and the house scraped and plastered, the priest is to go and examine it. And if the mold has spread in the house, it is a persistent defiling mold. The house is unclean. It must be torn down, its stones, timbers, and all the plaster, and taken out of the town to an unclean place. Anyone who goes into the house while it is closed up will be unclean until evening. Anyone who sleeps or eats in the house must wash their clothes. But if the priest comes to examine it and the mold has not spread after the house has been plastered, he shall pronounce the house clean because the defiling mold is gone. To purify the house, he is to take two birds and some cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hyssop. He shall kill one of the birds over fresh water in a clay pot. He is to then take the cedar wood, the hyssop, the scarlet yarn, and the live bird, dip them into the blood of the dead bird and the fresh water, and sprinkle the house seven times. He shall purify the house with the bird's blood, the fresh water, the live bird, the cedar wood, the hyssop, and the scarlet yarn. Then he is to release the live bird in the open fields outside the town. In this way, he will make atonement for the house, and it shall be clean." Seems like it would be easier to just burn the whole place down, but what do I know? Um, Kentucky fans, this is what you have to do to get rid of Calipari, so good luck.